Thank you everybody for joining us today. As you know, Sotheby's is a proud to be a long time supporter of the museums. And today we are delighted to have Carol Vale, who's such an important figure in the art world and has been the director of the Peggy Guggenheim Collection in Venice since 2017. Hello, Carol, how are you? Hello, Claudia, I'm very well. Lovely to see you, even if only virtually. Yes, we know, I normally see in this magnificent garden of your museum, so, you know, it, it's a bit of a change, but now we've all gotten used to that. Where are you now? Well, I'm actually in my office at the museum, uh, and I must say I'm very pleased to, to be here. Uh, like everyone else, I've been, I've been in lockdown and spent most of my time at home. Uh, here in Venice, um, but being the director of this, uh, this wonderful place, I have actually been able to come to the museum to make sure that everything is fine and everything is fine and to salute, even from a distance, our security guards who are doing everything they can, of course, to make sure that the museum remains safe and secure 24 hours a day. And your museum is, has such a wonderful organization that I'm sure that you've managed to keep it as such, I imagine you had to change, rethink on how to engage your audience. That is exactly right. So everyone again has been uh, working from home whenever possible. There is also staff which hasn't been able to work like our frontline staff. And yes, we've had to keep our audiences engaged because even though we've been closed for such a long time, just like so many other museums, we just want to make sure to keep our audiences with us, even if remotely. And so we've been devising all kinds of new digital activities for them. And so my staff uh, has been extremely, extremely diligent in this way as we've developed a whole new line of digital activities which are available. And I'm also very glad to say that even during the lockdown, we were able to launch our new website. Which I have seen and I, I have to say, I, I find it extremely interesting. I've been watching your website and all the videos that you do on your current exhibition, which is going to go on for a while now, isn't it? Well, migrating objects. Well, in fact, when we reopen on the 2nd of June, which, is, which also happens to be the Festa de la Repubblica here in yes. Italy, um, we are going to open the museum free of charge to the public. Um, and then we will close and we won't open again until the weekend. And then we will keep the museum open on weekends in June. We really have to monitor our visitors extremely carefully, as you can imagine. There are all kinds of procedures that we have to put in place to ensure the security and safety of staff and of our visitors. There will be timed entries. People now have to book online and there are only so many number so many people who will be able to come to the museum they will have to follow a particular trajectory and so for the time being we are only going to open the palazzo the palazzo venia dei leoni and the barchessa where it will be possible to see uh, most of the permanent collection unfortunately migrating objects which is the show of a special presentation of peggy guggenheim's african and oceanic works will not be open open uh, for the time being. Um, as, you, as you know, we have a very um, important and significant internship program here at the PGC. And right now we do not have interns except for two. And we rely on our interns for many things, for the general running of the museum and also for uh, guarding the galleries. And um, as we have no interns and as we are having to cut back costs and not able to um, contract um, outside um, gallery guards for the time being, we can only open up part of the museum, which um, of course is a great shame, um, but we have to go about this slowly, carefully, I and mean, then hopefully with a bit of luck as visitors come back, as the situation hopefully improves, though I'm also conscious of the fact that it will take a long, long time. Hopefully then we might be able to open up our temporary exhibition spaces. Well, I totally understand what you say. I mean, I've, uh, as you know, we've seen each other a lot last year because last, last summer, because one of my daughters was interning with you. And I have to say that the buzz of all these uh, young people is uh, fantastic in the museum and they really give, you know, 
a lot of sense of what's happening in there and they're so dedicated and devoted. There are some times in June when, when, when Venice will be totally fu fully booked up. I heard from friends of mine, the place that they want to go, what is your dream after lockdown? Everybody's dream is to go to Venice. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, an oasis of peace in this uh, dark moments that we've had and definitely your museum is the place because you can enjoy enjoy the, the gr grandeur of Venice and the, the magnificence of the art and you know this this is also um, important to think how art can help in these difficult times you know somebody thinks about the painting or a work of art think absolutely that wonderful so which Te tell us if you have one artwork that inspires you in well, the collection. <laughs> well, the whole collection inspires me. And I absolutely believe in the therapeutical aspects of art. Uh, and in fact, I've, I've always been a great fan of abstraction of artists like, for example, Kandinsky, um, who believe in the regenerative powers of art and believe that uh, art really uh, had an extremely important place within humanity. And so um, I hope that when people come to the museum, I mean, they will be able to see our Kandinsky's. We have three Kandinsky's, uh, including an early one when Kandinsky is beginning to become really quite abstract and even heading towards uh, non-objectivity. Non but I think and hope that uh, most visitors will find a true moment of respite when they come to the to the PGC. And as you said, because of the garden, because of the quality, because of the quality of the art, this special, unusual looking palazzo uh, on the Grand Canal, which is a little bit of an aberration, uh, but that is also what makes it so unique. And of course, also the, the, the spirit of Peggy who brought all this together was there for everyone. She really wanted it to be something public. And during her lifetime, as you probably know, she used to open the collection several afternoons a week. Uh, and that was a wonderful moment for people to come and visit her, her home museum. So there are plenty of works which, uh, which are, of course, inspirational. I mean, from our great Magritte, the uh, Empire of Light painting, which is the, a very strange painting, uh, but also very beautiful. Um, there are some fantastic Picassos. I mean, we have a 1927 studio painting, which I find fascinating because I think it's when Picasso was probably at his most abstract. And of course, you can never consider uh, Picasso as a truly abstract painter, even when he was developing Cubism in the, in the early 20th century. But that to me is a fascinating, fascinating work. Um, being, as I said, a great lover of, uh, of abstraction and, uh, and, uh, and design. So there, there are plenty of works and I love them all for different reasons and for what they generally convey. Um, and I really find solace uh, and uh, uh, something inspirational um, when, when I look at most of them, to, to be honest. We have a wonderful Delaunay painting, which I find also uh, very, very beautiful. It gives me a sense of peace. Uh, there's a wonderful sense of color. I, I think I could probably go through virtually every work of art, every painting, every sculpture in the collection, and something will give me something different for a different moment, a different moment of the day, uh, and a different um, emotion that I might feel at that particular time that I am in the, in the gallery. So another, another problem to which I know that Peggy Guggenheim is very committed to is your kids' problem. And a couple of times I came to the museum and it was fantastic to see all these children walking around, even at a very early age. And this is, I, I think, what, you, what you're looking forward to see again very soon in, in, a, in the gardens of the museums and inside the galleries. Of course, I mean, we want to have kids back, uh, but right now we cannot have, uh, we cannot have good I imagine. Of course. Mm -hmm. And that is, of course, very upsetting because it has always been the mission of the Guggenheim, of the Guggenheim Foundation at large, to focus on this educational mission because we, we believe very much in, in future generations and in forming those uh, future lovers of, of art. And so our younger audiences are absolutely critical. And as you say, it's wonderful to see these young children running around the garden, looking at the sculptures, wanting to climb on them. And of course, you want to let them do that because the sculpture should also be uh, objects that, that they can touch, that they can interact with, but we have to try and calm them down. And it will be wonderful when we're able to 
uh, to have those moments again. So we have been developing a program of Escuela de Guggenheim online because we absolutely cannot forget about our educational mission. So we devised a special program for teachers with, uh, with many videos, which are dedicated exactly to themes, to multidisciplinary themes for the 2019-2020 school year, because we just don't want them to... Uh, to think that we've forgotten about them because they are really a critical part of uh, of our of our audience. Oh, beautiful. And also, so one one question which is very important to us. I mean, um, we are at the end of May. The COVID situation started at, let's say, around the tenth of March. Everything locked down, and during this time, the system of art has kind of supported each other form some kind of collaboration, try to find a way to support each other. How do you see that? Well, I, I do think we have to continue collaborating as much as possible. I mean, we here in Venice have always believed in collaborating with other institutions, which we have done for years with, with the university, with Cap Foscari, with, uh, uh, and with, with other institutions. And we certainly want to go on doing that whenever, whenever possible. And I think in that way, we can also make one another stronger and i think we have to show this uh, this form of uh, of support uh just so to ensure that our museums will go on will go on thriving as much as possible but of course it will at times that will be difficult as well because then every institution has got its own particular mission but we mustn't forget that we are all similar to 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 these um, to a worldwide to a worldwide audience so the more collaboration and support uh, that we can give one another, the better. Uh, and again, we've been working with institutions because I've we've always believed, and I certainly believe it very strongly, that it's only by collaborating with other institutions uh, that we can really uh, make some kind some kind of difference. We cannot just be completely isolated. That doesn't work in absolutely area, any area. Yeah, so this is for sure. And I think we learned that during these months. And what are the plans of the museums? Obviously, uh, I think that some of the next exhibition have been delayed. Well, yes, unfortunately, there are some exhibitions that we just cannot put on uh, for logistics, but also for financial reasons. Um, so very sadly, the Legia Clark exhibition, which is now the Guggenheim will not come, will not be coming to Venice. This would have been a wonderful opportunity to present this uh, Brazilian avant-garde artist to, uh, to our audiences, but that will not happen. On the other hand, I'm very pleased that uh, the Guggenheim build, uh, that the show will be uh, visible in Bilbao. Um, but I'm very much looking forward to our Edmundo Bacci exhibition, which yeah. is scheduled to open in mid-October. Um, that would be a great opportunity because he's a little known artist, even though he was an important spatialista. Very um, important, very important for the, for the birth of all the spatialismo with Fontana as well. And, uh, exactly, exactly. And I think this will also send a good message to Venice, to Italy. Uh, and an Italian uh, artist. An Italian artist, and there hasn't been an international a, museum in Italy. It's a very good choice. Exactly. And he's a beautiful, beautiful artist, wonderful colorist. There hasn't been a major show for years and years and years. So I think this is the right moment to do this. So I'm very excited uh, about this upcoming exhibition. But you know, also the, the, your permanent collection will be a reason enough <laughs> for anyone to come to, to your place and have also, you know, this finally this breakout. The, the the biggest lockout is to come to Venice and 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 your and the visit to to the Guggenheim is definitely the top top pick. Well, that's very kind of you to say that. Thank you, Carol. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. I am looking forward to visiting the Peggy Guggenheim collection very soon. I look forward to welcoming you in person. Thank you, Carol.